Welcome to Mark Gibson's Human Risk Channel. Accountant with the Simation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Astralda. Enjoy learning! Okay, so once again, good morning class and welcome to your financial market class. Today, we'll discuss about the currency trading. So, um, we'll talk about the basic of currency trading and then we'll uh, cover the Big Mac index. So, ano kaya yung Big Mac na yan? So, later on, pag-uusapan natin and then we'll proceed with derivatives. No, so the basics of currency trading, currency market or the Forex, FX or Forex exchange is the largest investment market in the world and continues to grow annually. Now, uh, the data that I have here was for April 2010. No? So it's kind of um, uh, late. The Forex market reached 4 trillion dollars in daily average turnover, an increase of 20% since 2007. Now, now, I tried to look up for a more updated data, but I can't find anything yet. No? So, um, pag meron ako nakuha data, I'll just share it with you. But the point is, it's the Forex, no? in foreign, foreign exchange becomes the largest investment market in the world. Kasi nga, class, unlike uh, stock market, ang Forex all is open for 24-7 trading. Kasi 24-7 uh, trading, though uh, it still follows schedules. Kasi there's the US market, the European market, and the Asian market. No? Foreign exchanges allow for 24-7 trading in currency pairs. Later on, we'll talk about these currency pairs, making it the world's largest and most liquid asset market. No? So when we say liquid asset, these are uh, diba sabi natin, assets that can be uh, readily convertible into cash. No? Since currency trading, these platforms are open 24-7. Then, um, And as you know, uh, everything right now is... Uh, uh, done electronically. So this is highly liquid and you can actually uh, trade and then convert it to cash no? at no, I mean, in no time. So while it is the largest market in the world, a relatively small number of currency pairs are responsible for the majority of volume and activity. Now, class, ito na yung pag usapan natin no? sa so, currency pairs. Kasi in currency trading, you must uh, sell and buy currency. No? So, uh, sabi natin no? in, in our case, we have pesos, Philippine pesos, and we would like to trade it with US dollar. No? So, well, the currency pair would be PHP and USD. So, ganun lang naman yun. No? Kasi, of course, you can trade peso to peso. No? So, that's not, um, well, you can you can trade. But that's not qualifies part of currency trading. Because in currency trading, it must be two different currencies. No? So, in our case nga, uh, Philippine peso, and then uh, being traded to another currency. So, ang, ang, ano ba yung mga um, common currencies that we trade on? So, there's um, USD, uh, Euro, ano pa ba? Yen, Won. No? So, yen. So, currencies are traded against one another as pairs. So, yan. Pinag-usapan natin. And each pair is typically quoted in pips or percentage in points out to four decimal places. So later on, we'll talk about what pips are. No? So currency prices fluctuate based on the economic situation of the countries involved, geopolitical risks and instability, and trade and financial flows, among other factors. No? Kaya, uh, in the Philippines class, uh, the agency responsible for uh, foreign exchange and currency trading is uh, the Banco Central of the Philippines. No? Central Bank of the Philippines or yung Banco, ano pang Tagalog ng, ano natin? May, ng BSP? Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Ayun. All right. 
So how does it work? Currency trading is a 24-hour market that's only closed from Friday evening to some Sunday evening. But the 24-hour trading sessions are misleading. There are three sessions that include the, Euro the European, Asian, and United States trading sessions. So, so ito yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Although there is some overlap in the sessions, the main currencies in each market are traded mostly during those market hours. This means that the certain currency pairs will have more volume during certain sessions. Traders who stay with pairs based on the dollar will find the most volume in the US trading session. E kasi nga naman, ang usual na nagdadrive even ng uh, currency trading would be the strongest currencies. No? So uh, right now, that, that would still be the US dollar. So, yun lang naman ang gusto natin sabihin dito. Okay. So, we, we let's talk about pairs and pips. All currency trading is done in pairs. Unlike the stock market where you can buy or sell single stock, you have to buy one currency and sell another currency in the foreign, uh, in the foreign exchange market. Uh, nearly all currencies are priced out to the fourth decimal point. A pip or percentage in point is the smallest in increment of trade. One pip typically equals one over 100 or one of 1%. One also, the way example natin kanina, uh, meron ako Philippine peso, I'd like to trade it with uh, Philippine dollar. Ngayon class, para saan ba kailan natin ginagamit yung mga gantong mga currency trading? Kaya nga importante na maipasok natin later on yung discussion on derivatives. No? Kasi like for example, you have a requirement for US dollars. No? So uh, uh, for instance, we need to purchase a machine. So remember, no, our currency is Philippine peso. We need to purchase a a machine from a U.S. supplier, syempre, that U.S. supplier will bill us in U.S.T. No? So, we need to pay in U.S.T. And uh, as you know, yung uh, exchange, no? U.S.T. to Philippine peso fluctuates no? uh, almost daily. So, what we need to do, ito na nga, kaya papasok yung discussion on derivatives, we'd like to lock the exchange rate for for dollars no kasi uh, usually naman meron terms tayong tinatawag uh, before we pay for uh, our purchase no so you for example yung yung uh, machine na purchase natin sabi natin na it will become due in 90 days no so yung currents yung exchange rate today will enter into derivatives para at least malak natin yung rate in 90 days times. No? And we do that to mitigate the risk of paying more. No? So isipin mo na lang ang dollar conversion kaya uh, today is sabihin mo na lang na 49. Uh, what if uh, it becomes 56 in 90 days, 90 days time? No? So there's a risk na magbabayad ka ng mas mahal when you did not enter into derivatives agreement or derivative in instruments. No? So at least if you enter into a derivative instrument right now, you can lock the price, say, at 50 pesos in 90 days' time. No? So instead of paying 56, you will only pay 50. No? So you mitigate the risk. Uh, of paying six pesos more, no? so that's the um, uh, para at least that's a basic explanation why we enter into currency trading, we enter into derivatives. No, basically to mitigate the risk of paying more. No? And of course, dahil nga trading to, there's always the element of risk. No, there's always risk involved. There's the embedded risk. No, uh, what if in 90 days time, naging 48. Uh, of course, dun. Dun may mga losses no, na tinatawag. Uh, 
kaya nga uh, we rely to different information from, coming from the banks no and even uh, central bank no for their forecast so uh, hindi naman tayo basta mag makipag negotiate ng rate without uh, looking into this different uh, information coming from the bank no? so in in our case it's Citibank, JP Morgan uh, in Philippines case that would be uh, the central bank so a pip or percentage in point is the smallest increment of trade one pip typically equals one over 100 of one percent or the number in the fourth decimal point most currencies are priced out to the fourth or fifth decimal point. Exceptions to this rule are currency pairs that include the Japanese yen as the code currency. These pairs typically priced out to the two or three decimal places, with a pip being represented by the second decimal place. Also, class, para lang naman mas maintindihan yung pip. Uh, Siyempre, uh, when we do currency trading, dapat meron ding tinatawag tayong uh, yung sa valuation hanggang saan ba yung, kasi decimal places you know, when you're talking about millions no so that decimal places um uh, are important no in in valuation your in in valuation your currency so what pip is trying to say is nililimit niya ilang decimal place ba dapat no? so yun lang naman yun. Okay, so the majority of the volume in currency trading is confined to only 18 currency pairs compared to the thousands of stocks that are available in the global equity markets. Although there are traded pairs outside of the 18, the eight currencies most often traded are, well, US dollar, Canadian dollar, Euro, British pound, Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar and the Japanese yen. So uh, it goes without saying that these are the most powerful uh, currencies of the most powerful countries in the world. No? So, kaya sinasabi ko palagi kanina, uh, yung currencies, the dominated in the currency trading are the ones also from the uh, most powerful countries. You know? Okay, so what moves currencies? Kasi di ba, uh, when we discuss stock market, kung napansin mo doon, uh, you can buy, uh, you can trade stock securities no? using a platform or a broker. No? So we talk about call financials at that time. Now, uh, for for and then we we've also talked about uh, ano ba yung mga factors that will increase or decrease the uh, market price for an entity we've talked about the intrinsic value no so uh, for currencies naman just the same no so it it uh, involves supply and demand no so imagine uh, and usually pag tumataas yung demand for certain currency well the price will go up no? so when the world needs more dollars the value of that dollar increases and when there are too many circulating the price drops no? pero ito naman yung law of demand and supply natin no? so other factors like the interest rates new economic data for, from the largest countries and geopolitical tensions are just a few of the events that may affect currency prices O oh, sige. Uh, let's talk about Big Mac Index. Ano ba tong Big Mac Index? No? So I, I'll just uh, read the uh, description. Then later on, I'll share my, my thoughts about this. No? So the Big Mac Index is a price index published by The Economist as an informal way of measuring the purchasing power parity or PPP between two currencies and provides a test of the extent to which market exchange rates result in goods costing the same in different countries. It seeks to make exchange rate theory a bit more digestible. So the index was created in 1986, takes its name from the Big Mac, a hamburger sold at McDonald's 
restaurant. No? So parang uh, ang sinasabi ng Big Mac Index is magkano ba yung Big Mac sa isang country? Kasi class, di ba? Uh, I'm not sure, no? Uh, pero in, in my case kasi, well, prior to pandemic, I travel a lot. No? So uh, that's another uh, another way for me to distress. Eh, no? So uh, and also part of my job in Xerox, I was able to go to different countries in Europe naman. So I went to in in 24 back in 20 ito na naman naka-record pala to no so nare-record yung chika ko pero uh, I'll try to uh, edit the video no para this yung recording will focus only on the content no? but ito naman uh, personal experience related to Big Mac index eh, no so parang ganun no uh, so I went to Netherlands France um, Belgium basically most countries in the Europe and then also London and uh, uh, the UK, sa UK naman. No? So, at that time, ang mahal for me, kasi nga, Philippine peso converted to USD, eh, syempre, ang tendency natin whenever we travel is we convert. No? So, yun dapat nga yung iiwasan. No? And then also, I travel a lot dito naman, different Asian countries, of course. No? So, ang ang naging basis ko noon no, is yung cost ng Coke in can. No? So at that time kasi may hilig pa ako sa Coke. Uh, so kung magkan, magkano ba ang Coke in can dito sa atin? So, pag, uh, sa parang mga 30 pesos. No? So pero ang pinakamahal na Coke in can na nabili ko is for 4 pounds doon naman sa UK. So imagine, parehas lang naman na Coke in can, parehas lang na Coke na iniinom ko dito sa Pilipinas, pero I will need to pay for 4 pounds nung nasa UK ako. So that's 280 pesos. So magkakoke pa ba ikaw kung ganun yung presyo? No? Kaya uh, ubos yung pera ko nun eh nung uh, travel sa UK. So it's, um, well I sent there I was sent there for business pero syempre nag-extend ako no so to do my own personal leisure time so and but that's that was the most expensive travel for me kasi masyadong mahal yung uh, ay, masyadong mahal yung cost of living nila doon eh, compared to uh, Philippine peso or compared to what we're used to uh, pay here no so kaya nga i have a boss no uh, at that time no? my boss was english uh, ang nagusto niya sa philippines kasi nga number one, laki ng value ng pera niya dito imagine no so uh, kung millionaire siya sa england eh baka billionaire siya pagdating dito sa philippines plus um, he appreciated the way um, I mean the 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 people here no so plus yun nga, yung yung cost of living dito eh, compared to where he lives for most of his life eh mas mura talaga though hindi na siya ganoon kamura lalo na kung sa sa Metro Manila ka nag nakatira no compared to provinces no so mataas na rin talaga yung cost of living natin Okay, so purchasing power parity, it's the concept of purchasing power is a tool used to make multilateral comparisons between national income and living standards of different countries. Ito lang naman yun, no? So imagine yung price ng Coke, 30 pesos lang. Coke and can, ha? Dito sa, sa atin. Hindi ko na alam yung price ng, sa ngayon, eh. Kasi ang tagal na rin akong nag-stop ng pag inom ng coke no but anyway ang sinasabi lang natin is kung 30 pesos lang yung cost ng one can dito bakit doon sa UK it's 280 pesos converted no kasi pala there's this purchasing power parity so ito yung uh, kaya kaya natin kuno compare yung prices eh para malaman natin ano ba yung uh, cost of living ng 
nung uh, countries na pinikino-compare natin. Kasi like, uh, if if I compare naman yung price sa Thailand, ah, mas mura naman sa Thailand. Or parang same level with the Philippines. no So, ang sinasabi dun is possibly uh, we are at the same level of cost of living. Kasi I found, I found it uh, also cheap in Thailand. Eh. Uh, Imagine, uh, naalala ko doon, yung mahilig sila doon sa pad thai. Pad thai natin kasi dito, pag binili mo dito sa uh, thai, thai restaurant, mahal eh. Pero pag doon sa kanila, mura. So, yun, yun lang. Yun yung mga nakakamiss sa travel. Anyway. So, parity between two countries implies that a unit of currency at one country will buy the same basket of goods and services in the other, taking into consideration price levels in both countries so, so ppa ratio measures deviation from the country from the condition of parity between two countries and represent the total number of the baskets of goods and services that a single unit of a country's currency can buy also uh, I, I also traveled to bangalore no pero hindi ko masyado na enjoy doon kasi nga yung food di ako di ako mahilig sa indian food eh, no Uh, pero yun din, kinompare ko lang din siya sa Coke and can. Uh, so, same way is in, in Big Mac naman, yung Big Mac approach, compare yung cost ng Big Mac. Uh, I'm sure you know yung Big Mac, no? yung burger ng, ng McDo, McDonald's. So, eto na. Six most expensive. Um, six most expensive places to buy a Big Mac. Oh, so, Switzerland, pinakamahal, converted to USD, it's 7.30. Magkano na ba ang Big Mac ngayon? May idea ba kayo? Check na natin. Di ako, di, di ako familiar na eh. Check natin ha. Big Mac. Ako, baka mag, mag, magutom pa tayo nito. cost in the Philippines. So, Big Mac pala natin ngayon is 193. Pero medium pa lang yun. Eh, syempre, doon na tayo sa... Paano ko ba ito makita? Ito. Sagit lang, ha? Check lang natin para may comparison tayo real time. Big Mac. Ayan. O, so, yun na. 193 pesos. O, so, yun na. 193. Sabi mo na lang na... Uh, so, 4 dollars. Mahal na rin. So, 7.3 dollars sa Switzerland. 6.37 sa Sweden. Norway 6.09, 5.66 sa U US, Israel 5.35, and then sa Canada uh, 5.29. So that's interesting. No? Pero ang oh, talaga mo kamahal talaga dito ng manirahan sa Switzerland. Eh. Cheapest naman, also oh, India. Imagine 1.62 lang. Lebanon, Russia, Turkey, South Africa, and Ukraine. Pero kasi class, um, sa Big Mac naman kasi, feeling ko, uh, meron kasi mga differences. No? Of course, kung, pup ako, kung pupunta ka ng India, syempre hindi sila kumakain doon ng beef. So, possible na possible na yung Big Mac nila is different from the Big Mac brand ng McDonald's. No? Kasi syempre, hindi mo, hindi mo naman pwede ipilit sa mga Indian yung beef patty. So, meron ka alternative. So, baka that's the reason why it's just cost 1.62. I'm not sure. Okay. Fastest earned. Ito naman. This statistic shows the average working time required to buy one Big Mac. So, imagine, ha? Gana daw ka, uh, syempre, 
diyan napapasok ang element na magkano ba yung minimum wage, parang ganun, no? So, imagine, no, dito sa atin, kanina sabi ko 190 pesos yung one Big Mac. So or four dollars, no? So gana daw ka raming oras. Ito na yung pinag-usapan natin to buy one Big Mac. So in Hong Kong, it's 8.6 minutes. In Luxembourg, it's 10.3 minutes. Switzerland is 10.6 minutes. And then, ito, ano na pala ito, no? So, by cities na pala ito, no? So, we have Switzerland also in Geneva. 10.8 minutes. Siyempre, papasok pa rin tayo sa Philippines. Imagine, na, ito naman yung six lowest earned. Sa Nairobi, 172.6 minutes. Philippines, 87.5. 0.5 minutes and then there's Mexico, Jakarta, Cairo and Ukraine. So um, imagine just by looking at the price of Big Mac dun nakikita na agad natin yung cost of living ng mga countries. No? So in the Philippines it will take 87.5 minutes. This is this data is as of um, 2015. No? So to purchase one Big Mac. So I hope, no? So that's 2015. Baka naman mas bumuti yung situation na ngayon. Okay. So that ends uh, the first part of our discussion. This has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!